Hello creatives and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to do the awaited pen tool basics. In Illustrator on the iPad I have it right here opened up. Now you probably heard about the pen tool before. It's kind of one of those tools where you either love it or you hate it. I'm going to make it easy for you and break it down. So I'm in Illustrator on the iPad. I already have a document set up. I'll show you in my settings over here. You'll see that it's in, or maybe you can't see. Um, it's in RGB color mode because we're only going to be working on the digital platform here. I also have it under 300 dpi, which is the standard. This is just your standard letter size, A4 or letter size artboard. So you can work with either one. I do have shapes already set up for us to uh, practice on. I will have a document of this down in the description down below. So if you want to follow along, you can. All you got to do is just download it and open this up in Illustrator on the iPad for yourself. Or if you're on a desktop, you can do it on a desktop. Um, it will be different if you do open this up on the desktop because you will not have your Apple Pencil. You will be using a mouse. So bear that in mind. Let's get started. If you notice when we open up the document, you're automatically defaulted to your direct selection tool, which is the first tool over here on the left toolbar. If you want a full breakdown of all of this, I have done previous videos on the explanation of everything in here. So if you want to watch that first, go ahead. Um, if you already have, great, let's continue. We're going to choose the pen tool. That's the third tool over here on the left toolbar. Now, I already have this first layer locked. This is going to be our baseline of what we're going to learn from. I have a new layer created. You just press this plus sign right up here in the layers panel and it creates a new layer for you. So I'm going to first show you how to name your layers. You just double tap. Let's name this one. Boom. Okay. Now I'm going to go pretty quickly through these. I'm just naming them based off of the shapes that we're doing. It's always a good habit to start getting into naming your layers right away. That way you're not left with like a million layers without a name on them and you're just like, what is on there? Because when you start getting into like a really, really intricate illustrations, you're going to lose your place. So it's just good practice for right now to name your layers. You'll thank yourself later. Okay, I'm going to go back to the circle layer. You just tap it. It's literally just like tap, 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 tap everywhere. So we have our pen tool selected. With the pen tool, there are two gesture inputs that you can do. That's what I'm gonna call them, gesture inputs. There's two gesture inputs that you can achieve with the pen tool. It's either a tap or a tap and drag or a click or a click and drag, depending on if you're working with a pen tool or with a mouse. So with just a tap, I'll zoom in here. So with a tap, you get one endpoint, no handles. With a tap and drag, you get an endpoint with two handles. So that's the main differences in your inputs when you're using the pen tool. Undo that. For a circle, which is what we have here, because I zoomed in on it, we're going to do a tap and drag, or a click and drag. So for the tap and drag, you want to choose any, there's no edges in circles, but you want to choose one edge. I usually start either on the top or the right, but you can start on any edge. So I'm going to tap and drag along one edge here. You can click and or tap and drag every side, whoops, to get a perfect circle. Uh, but the more you keep going and the more you get used to using the pen tool, the m less endpoints you're going to need. So in order to complete the circle, you just tap and drag on that original endpoint that you created. So it's not a 100% perfect circle. As you can see here, I wasn't very careful. You can always go back with your point selection tool, or if you're on the desktop, a, point, a white direct selection tool is what it's called, and you can... Uh, Activate a point, drag it up, activate a point, drag it in place basically is what we're doing to get a perfect circle. Now, as you can see here, the fill color is quite distracting. When we activate the fill color option over here and we take the fill color away, you can see better where you're going and where you've been. So I'm going to tweak this just a little bit. 
because you're not always going to get it 100% on your first go unless you are like really in the zone and working well within the program. Here is our circle. Now, as I mentioned before, you aren't always going to need all those endpoints. So I'm going to choose our shape. I'm just going to move him over on that beautiful circle. And I'm going to show you how to do it with only two endpoints. So let's select our pen tool once again. And I'm going to do a tap and drag. Make sure you get that degree angle at zero. And then I'm going to go down to the bottom here and tap and drag in the opposite direction. To finish the circle, once again, you're just going to tap and drag on that original point, end point that you created first. So this is looking like an egg, basically. <laughs> you can go ahead and choose the point selection tool here, and you can pull the handles to create your perfect circle. That is how you do it in two different ways. So this circle has four endpoints. If you tap the point selection tool, you'll see those four endpoints. And then this one has two endpoints. So you can work either way, with two or with four. It's whatever works best for you and whatever gives you the more perfect circle. So that is how to do a circle. I'm just gonna hide that layer of the circle I'm going to make sure the square layer is selected and then we're going to go ahead and create this square. Now, the square by far is the easiest of all the shapes to create. Why? Because it's literally just tap, 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 tap. That is just like the most basic thing you could ever create. It's very, very easy. So I'm just going to show you what it's going to look like. You just tap, 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 and then to close the square, you just tap on that first endpoint you created. And there's your square. Why did I show you the circle first? So that way you can get the understanding of an endpoint which is just an endpoint or an endpoint that has handles. And that's basically how you're going to manipulate any kind of shape that you're working in in a really detailed illustration. You're going to manipulate those handles that we did with the circle and that's going to give you like different looks, different feels, different mo movements and like moments of tension and stuff like in your piece. So we're going to move on to a different one, lock all my layers as I go along, that way I don't accidentally choose them. I'm going to move on to the triangle layer, and then we're going to zoom in here. Now the triangle layer, you can choose to do the endpoints with the handles, or you can just use your standard endpoint and just do the tap. So I'm just going to do the tap. The reason if you want to do um, endpoints with handles is if you want to change the angle and the sharpness of each edge for the triangle, but we're not going to do that. So we're just going to do tap endpoints. There we go. And of course, if you are very particular and you want to get it dead on in the center, you can always activate your endpoints using the point selection tool and you can make it as perfectly placed as you want it. There is our triangle. It's just tap, 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 and then go back to your original end point that you started with and tap right on it, and it closes the shape. So closing the shape is very important because then you can have fill colors and you won't get any crazy weird things happening, like colors shooting across the artboard, because that's what happens when you don't close the shape properly. And now we are going to move on to a more complex shape, the speech bubble. So I'm going to lock that triangle layer tap on the speech bubble layer. We're going to zoom in here. So now you have two different shapes. For this one, it's going to be a little bit more tricky, but you can do it. It depends on where you feel more comfortable starting. So if you liked the circle and you want to start on the oval part of this, go ahead and do that. If you're more comfortable just using the tap selection and you liked the square and the triangle, go ahead and start with the little triangle. I'm going to start, I'm going to start with the circle just because to me, that's easier. I'm gonna tap and drag, and I'm gonna do more endpoints than what I normally would do. I'm gonna show you how you work through the process. Let's go ahead and do, whoops. Okay, here's a good point. If you accidentally tap the screen, you can just two finger touch to undo, and your point is still activated. Your first point is still activated. All right, so let's tap and drag. Okay, you see there, I overshot it a bit, but don't worry, we're not gonna change it right now, we're gonna change it later. It's okay, like if you're like, oh my God, it's, it's fine, <laughs> okay? It's fine, don't freak out. So we're just getting the basic idea of the shape right now. 
I'm going to tap and drag and then I'm going to tap and drag here at the connection between the sphere and the triangle. Why? Because I'm going to need to what's called break a handle. To break a handle, we're just going to choose that point selection tool, tap the handle, and then you're going to hold down this constraint option here, this activator, and then that breaks the handle on the iPad. So from here, let me select my pen tool. We're going to switch from doing a, click, a tap and drag to just a tap because we're at a corner point now. I'm just going to tap and then the next intersection we have here, I'm going to tap and drag because we're going to need to break that handle again. Tap and drag along the line. See what I did there? Whoops. I accidentally tapped the screen. Okay. So now I'm going to break that handle. Select the point selection tool here. Tap the end point of that handle there. Hold down the constraint break the handle. Now I'm going to pull it a little bit further out just because this is going to be a curve. It's not a straight line. It's a curve. So I'm going to pull it a little bit further. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. Hey guys. So, okay. I'm editing this video back, the one you're watching right now. And, uh, turns out that my camera cut off and I lost a lot of footage. So, um, Sorry about that. So basically what I went through was finishing the shape of the speech bubble and closing that shape up and um, manipulating the points so that way they're in the correct spot for matching up with the template. You're not gonna see any of that. So instead of seeing that, we're gonna skip right ahead and go into the specialized shape that I had created on the template and we're going to utilize the same techniques that I was using for the speech bubble and we are going to be using them on the specialized shape. So let's just go ahead and let me zoom in down that. here and we'll do a more complex shape. Um, if you guys ever see any of those really beautifully like illustrated topography pieces like, I don't know, this one, you'll see that there's a lot of like filigree, detailed, beautiful things all over it. I'm going to use this. I'm going to lock that speech bubble layer so we're not selecting it. I am falling. My chair does not want me to stay up. There we go. So now that we have our little reference, uh, whenever you're doing complex shapes like this, it's always good to have a reference to base your shapes on and such like that. And also to pull colors from if you're doing realism. But earlier, when I was talking about the different types of points, between like the blunt end point is what I'm gonna call it, the blunt end point or the point the end point with handles, you're going to utilize both of those in complex shapes. Finding the high point, like high points of a shape or like low points of a shape. So for instance, high point would be like right here, right here, here. Low point would be like in here in the center. So we're going to dive right on into this little filigree piece. So we have the pen tool selected. We're on a new layer. For a complex shape, start with an end, an end, an end of a curve. And I'm going to just tap and drag along the line here. I'm also going to choose another high point here. Click and drag along that line. And you see I'm being very careful here because I want them to be precise. The next one I'm going to do, like I know there's a high point here, but that's going to create way too many points. So I'm going to go right over here at the junction. I'm going to move. I'm going to keep moving. And then I'm going to go over here where there's a low point. So like you have hills and then you have valleys. So whenever I'm saying high points and low points, you want to place an end point at the top of that hill or the very bottom of the valley. That's kind of like the general consensus as far as creating shapes and having smooth lines rather than having like a million points and really jumbling up your shapes with a lot of endpoints. The lowest point here looks to be about right here. So I'm going to tap and drag, not very far. I'm going to tap and drag here at the junction. Now when we're creating shapes like this and you come to this junction, you're probably going to be more inclined to go this way underneath and go over. But since we're creating a full shape, we're going to go the opposite way. So let me move my point back a little bit because I passed the junction. And then I'm going to go here, tap and drag, tap and drag. 
And then I know I did a point here at the uh, bottom of the valley. So I'm going to mirror that. And then I'm going to put another point at the junction here. So tap and drag up. And then here's another hill, if you will. So instead of putting it at the topmost point here, I'm going to put it at the farthest point of when the direction changes. Technically, there's another junction here it's where the curve changes direction. I'm going to put a point there, tap and drag. And then there is a perfect junction right here where I'm going to then mirror this point over here, tap and drag, and then we're going to break this handle. So tap the handle, break it, and then I'm going to complete the shape by tapping and dragging on the original end point there. So now we can go back and we can fix all of our handle lines and I can show you how creating this shape really works. I'm going to give myself more space here. There we go. Move the handles, move the junction points. I call them junction points. Others may call them something else. So you see how I'm literally just lining up everything? That way it ends up looking the way it should look. There we go. So it's just a matter of matching up and moving each point to where it matches up with your shape or with your reference. So I'm gonna move these points as well by tapping on them to activate and then dragging them. Now it looks like it's perfectly outlined, which is what we want. So if you tap on the shape you created, tap the fill color. Let's fill it with a gold, shall we? So let's do a shiny gold. Boom. Now you have your little filigree. And then with the fill color activated, you can see where some of this is not really working. So then you can always go back in, tap the shape anywhere, and then fix your angles. So it's all about look and feel for half of these. So you can see here where I started with the shape, get rid of that fill color for you, where we started with this basic shape, this basic outline for reference. It's just a reference. And then as we continued on, and then we manipulated and modified the shape to suit our needs. And I'm gonna create these little guys here too. So these ones are gonna be a lot easier. So I'm gonna tap and drag along that angle, tap and drag on one side of the, va of the hill, Tap and drag on the other side to avoid having to create too many points. And then tap and drag on that original shape following the angle this way. So now that this happened, don't worry, don't panic. Choose this selector here that normally constrains proportions and it's gonna break this handle if you tap on it and then you can break it. So you can see how that created the shape that we wanted. There we go. So I'm gonna take this shape, I'm just gonna duplicate it just to save myself some time, flip it around, use it over here to mirror. Now you can kind of see how this all can be transformed and manipulated just by moving a few points. And that was all created with the pen tool. Now I can even go in here, layer six, and I can hide it and you can really see the filigree that happened. So you see this in a lot of illustrated work, a lot of topography work, hand lettering work. You see a lot of this type of thing in there and now you know how to create it. That is the basics of the pen tool. Go ahead and keep practicing. I personally love it because you can get really nice intricately created designs while using it. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Check out all my stuff down below. I always have like my website and my social links down there so you can see my work that is not just posted here. I hope you all are having a great day and I will see you soon creatives. <laughs>